I still regret it. Even after third to five years, I still have mixed feelings about leaving. My motivation for posting this is unclear, but I feel the need to get it off my chest. I, 60, married my high school sweetheart when I was 18 years old. He was well-educated, bright, and charming, and the kind of guy who could hold a room's attention. He was incredibly outgoing. Despite the fact that I'm really timid, we were a great match. After 25 years together, we were the parents of two little children, and I was pleased with my life. Then my wife started a new career, and she was doing well, gaining promotions and staying on the job for extended periods of time. So you can see where this is going. By the way, you're completely wrong. I had a relationship with her. I was becoming more angry with her since she was out working late to provide for our children. She was not at home to make dinner, and I had never bothered to learn how to cook until this incident occurred, because I didn't do it. The laundry would pile up for a few days, and I would be responsible for picking up the kids from school while she was away at work. Nevertheless, I never expressed my feelings, and every day when my wonderful wife returned home, I put on a brave front and pretended everything was okay, even though it clearly wasn't. I'm certain that if I'd spoken my feelings to her, she would have listened, but I didn't. In the course of a work function, I met a lady with whom I chatted on the phone for many weeks. Things quickly got inappropriate, and I did nothing to stop it. Then, two weeks later, I wrote my wife a birthday card in which I expressed my feelings for her and how beautiful she was, and then I walked out on her. The worst part was that she never yelled or screamed at me. She did nothing except stand there and watch me pack up my possessions all while my children were playing in the next room, completely oblivious of what was going on. She didn't say anything, just stood there crying softly. I caused pain to the one who is the most important in my life. She was dismissed because she was unable to cope with the school run and the extra childcare arrangements. As a consequence, my alimony payments had to be increased, and I despised my ex-wife for making me do so. Looking back, I can't believe how self-centered I was. The woman who I had fooled and who is now responsible for raising my children on her own has requested extra monies in order to provide for them. I just saw them every other Saturday, and that was about it. My AP and I were estranged very soon. She didn't want anything to do with me, and she didn't want anything to do with me in particular when I was almost bankrupt due to alimony payments, which she took advantage of. In spite of the fact that she never expressed how much she was affected by my actions, I could hear her sobbing herself to sleep on the few occasions when I had to stay over with the kids for whatever reason. When I left, my wife was the one who eventually filed for divorce because every time she asked if I had hired an attorney, I replied, I'm not ready. And she eventually filed because she said it was too painful. I spent years resenting my wife for stealing my money, when in reality, she had done nothing wrong, and I still loved her but was too proud to admit it. When I was unhappy, I would say things like, I haven't loved you in a long time, but I have stayed for the children. And she would never say anything in response. That's something I'll never be able to forgive myself for ever again. She was adamant about making things work, and she fought for me every day for months, but I was indifferent in her efforts. She admired me despite the fact that I disliked her. Then she met Mark, who was much older and wiser than she was, and he fell in love with her in the same manner that I should have fallen in love with her. He was and continues to be a lovely and kind gentleman toward her and my children seeing someone else fall in love with the person you were intended to be with for the rest of your life is one of the most difficult things I've ever experienced. Then you should have fought for me because I would have loved you forever if you would have let me, she said when I told her two weeks before her wedding. On the day of her wedding, I drove to the church and waited outside in my car, telling myself I would object to the wedding, but I didn't. I was a little disappointed. Thirty years have passed, and seeing that written in front of me now makes me feel just as bad as hearing it 30 years ago. Having to see her with him for all these years has served as my penance, and although I've had the odd connection with her, nothing substantial, I will never forgive myself for what I did today, would have been our 42nd wedding anniversary, which should have been our punishment. My belief is that infidelity is not something that can be fully recovered from. Rather, it is something that must be learned to live. With Story 2 how do you deal and feel okay with throwing away two years of love, sweat, and lots of tears invested into a relationship? How can you accept what occurred when there is no silver lining? You just notice the harm and take a step back from it. This relationship just served to damage you and put you back in life. All they did was steal from you, squander your time, degrade your self-esteem, take your money, and remove your hope and happiness. You get the impression that you have learned nothing significant or useful. 
You have conflicting emotions because, on the one hand, you still care for and love this person as you always have. But on the other hand, you begin to see them for who they really are and everything that they have done to you, and you become furious and disgusted with them. You are filled with rage. With your love covering up all the terrible, the blinders gradually dissolve and you no longer notice them. You no longer view them through rose-colored glasses or in their potential or version that you envisioned, but you see them for who they are and what they have shown you, and it is something really nasty. What is your thinking process for overcoming those painful sentiments of remorse? as well as indignation and even hate for the individual who exploited you. Whether they cheated, led you on, feigned to desire a relationship to mind FKU and put you through this hot and cold period before abandoning you like old hard cold McDonald's french fries for the birds to consume. I have difficulty letting go. It pushes me to face a slew of demons. The way things ended makes me rethink the whole relationship. As if it were all a deception, all a ruse to take advantage of me. I now see how tightly I was clinging to a delusion. I had to think he loved me or everything would be as horrible as it seemed. It was my most powerful weapon for forgiving him and moving on from the twisted deed he committed upon me. If he loved me, it may have been an accident, and I justified myself by remaining silent all that time. But if he didn't, he was just a criminal, a predator. A stranger to me and an abuser who regarded me as the ideal naive innocent target. That is, I feel, why I was able to make such a significant contribution to the relationship. I need to believe that he was concerned about me. That was correct, by the way. It pushed me to give all I had which only helped to exacerbate my predicament. I love the fact that I still have feelings for him and want him back in my life. In an unusual sense, he feels at ease in his own skin. As I got older, he served as a refuge, a source of hope, and a source of fantasy for me. He was my home away from home, and he was everything I had ever wanted. However, reality did not live up to my expectations and desires for him. There was a lot of potential there, but it always seemed like we were on two completely different time schedules from one another. Each of us is always accessible at two different times for the other. Although it is the same train ticket for the same location, the departure time is different. The difficulty was that I was willing to wait for him, but he wasn't willing to wait for me. It's tough to let go of someone when you've given so much of yourself to them. My rejection rate for legitimately good men was at an all-time high, and some of them work admittedly much better than him. The life, love, and vacations I've given up for someone who has used me, cheated on me, humiliated and turned me into a shell of the person I used to be. Someone who wasn't even loyal to me or honest with me. I'm sick of it all. All I want is that it weren't true. It makes my heart ache. It was this man who set us up for failure, and despite my attempts to clean up his own mess, he just served to aggravate the situation. I loathe this individual and all they've done to me and put me through, as well as all of their lies and deceit. This individual is the greatest lie I have ever met, as well as the largest letdown. They are never there when you need them, and they are also the most self-centered person I have ever encountered. I provided them with several opportunities to put things right, but they decided to make things worse with each passing chance. I want to go away from them because I deserve so much more than what they are giving me. How can you go over the sentimental feelings, the deep-seated connection, and the hope that you have for someone?